Hey, thanks for joining us this week here at Riverbank Church. We'd love for you to stay connected throughout the week and everywhere you go. And one of the best ways to do that is through the Riverbank Church app. There you can find more messages and additional resources to help you grow in your faith. We hope that you're encouraged, challenged, and come to love God more. Let's jump right into worship.
If you're online, happy high five to you. Great, we are here to have a great time tonight. So church, go ahead, have a seat as we take a look at this video. On October 26th at our White River Junction location, we will be hosting our fourth annual Community Fall Festival. We're going to have tons of fun activities, bounce houses, face painting, food trunks, an 80 car trunk or treat, and even some exciting live entertainment. Last year, we welcomed over 3,200 people and we're expecting even more this year. We need your help to make this year's Fall Fest an incredible event. There are several ways for you to get involved and make this our best fall festival yet. You can sign up to host a trunk or treat at our trunk or treat event, help set up, tear down, greet our guests as they arrive, or help to run the festival once it gets started. Last year's lines were crazy, so we're actually increasing the number of trunk or treat lines this year to make wait times shorter for our guests. Bottom line, we need you to help make this happen. We need you to bring in tons of candy. No, 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 seriously, tons of candy. I'm talking about all the candy you can get. Last year, we filled this entire room with candy, and I know we can do even more this year. Each weekend, starting now until the festival, we'll have tables set up in the lobby where you can drop off candy. One last very important detail. On October 20th, right after the 1130 experience, we will have a super important meeting for everyone serving at Fall Festival. An event this big takes a lot of organization and we have so many exciting details to share with you and some important changes to communicate. So take out your phones right now. Go ahead, I'll wait. And mark your calendars for October 20th after our 1130 experience in White River Junction. To learn more about Fall Fest or to sign up, visit the event section on your app or visit whiteriverfallfest.com. Come on, Burbank Church, what's up? How are you guys doing? Hey, uh, my name is Patrick Tooney. I'm the Riverbank White River location pastor. I'm excited to share life with you. I'm thankful that you guys are here. If it is your first or second experience at our church, uh, we have a place we would love to connect with you. Uh, in between the glass doors before you scoot uh, today here at White River, swing by, just say hi to us. We have a couple free gifts we would love to get in your hands. If you drink coffee, you want one. And if you like those little tote bags that are pretty cool, then you want the other thing. So make certain you say hi to us. We would love the chance to get to meet you. Um, and when you all sat down, you came in, you might have sat on one of these. Maybe you don't know you're sitting on one of these. You can scooch around till you find it. Um, it's there, I promise. Uh, this is an invite card. Um, and what this is, is a really simple opportunity for you to take this home and to find a person that maybe you know, maybe it's a person you've never met, and you give it to them and say, hey, you need to come and experience the life change that's happened in me because of what God has done through Riverbank Church. So invite them to come here, right? Invite them to come and experience the transformation we know happens because of Jesus. So what you need to do, grab a stash of these things. Everybody say stash. Now you all know that's more than two, right? That's a couple. A stash is like a pile. But like take these things, get rid of them, invite them, be intentional about how you hand these things out. We want to fill this place so that people can be changed because of Jesus. And when you came in, you should have gotten a program. If you got it, take it out, wave it above your head, wave it around, make a little noise. I need to know you guys are in this awesome. Um, on the back of that program, there is so much info for you guys. There's a lot happening at our church. We've got events, we have outreach opportunities. Um, we have so much happening. You need to uh, take these things home and actually read what's on the back of there so that you can plug in and engage in everything that's happening here at our church. And if you've been here for a little while, you might know about a year ago, we kicked off our forward offering. Can we give it up right now for the forward offering? It's so good. forward offering is our way of preparing for what God has next for the Upper Valley through Riverbank Church because Jesus has already shown up. We believe he will show up again and we want to be ready for when he does that. So what that means is our goal is to raise a million dollars by 2020. That was our goal, right? Do you guys want to, you got, anyone have an idea where we're at? We're doing pretty good, right? We've got over $500,000 towards the forward offering. Come on, we can celebrate that. $536,000. That's amazing. 
right? And what is that gonna go to? Well, there's three specific things. One is construction, the other is missions, and then the rest is the future. So construction, we are going to turn this atmosphere right now where we are here, Riverbank White River, this will become a kid's environment because the kid's environment right now is busting at the seams. If you don't believe me, go sign up to serve in Riverbank Kids and you will experience it and then you will give all the money to the rest of the forward offering, right? So I just, you need to know, we're gonna do that. We're gonna build a 600 something seat auditorium and some of the green space we have. Um, and, there, and, and that's what's happening for construction, for missions. There's a church in Guatemala that's actively being developed right now. The foundation work has already happened. Things are coming together. And that's because we believe in missions, right? We're gonna reach people in Guatemala. It's so cool. We're partnering with Compassion International to do that. It's happening, it's going to happen. And we, you, if you've given already to the forward offering, you've had a hand in pulling that off. And then the future, we want to be ready for whatever God has next. We don't know what place, we don't know what space, but when God says go, we want to be ready to go. So we're developing, we're, we're, put, we're just getting ready, we're getting ready. So if you're here and you want to engage financially in the rescue mission, I want to read something to you right now because I think that we can come here and we can feel pressure to give, and that's not our goal. Our goal is not to bring you in here and do a shakedown. We want you to be obedient to what God is calling you to do, and this is what he's telling you. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it says, you must each, I'm gonna slow down, we need to hear this, we need to hear this. You must each decide in your hearts how much to give. Decide in your house how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Pray. I want you to pray about what God is putting on your heart to give. And then when he says do it, just do it. Right? And if you want to give to the rescue mission here at Riverbank Church, you can do that. We've got giving stations throughout each location. We have a few here in Riverbank White River. You could grab a business reply envelope from the seat in front of you, put what you want in there, drop it in a mailbox or a giving station. It'll come to us. Or you can give digitally. Many of you already have. Thank you so much for those of you who have given digitally. And if you didn't know you can, you could text to give. You could give through the app. You can give through the website. We want to do everything we can to make it simple for you. Hey, I'm going to pray, and we're going to dive right into the rest of this experience. Jesus, we just acknowledge that you are here. You are here right now, and I pray that we wouldn't miss you. I pray that we wouldn't miss out on the ways that you're here. Open our eyes to be able to see you. Open our ears to be able, uh, our ears to hear you, and I just pray that we would know there's nothing ordinary about today, Jesus. I pray we would know it's a day that is marked by you. We love you so much. We're so thankful for you, Jesus. In your name we pray, and yours alone. Amen. What's up, Riverbank Church? Like good? Uh, my name's Chris. I'm the lead pastor here at Riverbank, and it's an honor to have you. I want to look right into the camera right now and let all of our locations, Claremont, those watching online, we love you guys. White River Junction in the house. Yeah. So every once in a while, we have the opportunity to have a guest in the house, and we have a guest today. And uh, just a little background, you've actually kind of met our guest before this summer if you were around when we were going through our series Voices. Pastor Ken Clater, you guys remember that? that remember that? Yeah, you remember Pastor Ken. The past, well, Pastor Ken is here for the weekend, and I'm just so honored to have him. Um, and here, here's the thing about Pastor Ken. He's got three kids, and uh, he and his wife are in our area for the weekend and uh, they're here with us, which is huge because that doesn't happen very often. Like, who comes to Vermont, New Hampshire? Not very many people come from Florida, right? And so, church, will you do me a favor? Will you give the biggest, warmest Riverbank welcome to my friend, our friend, Pastor Ken Clater? All right, Riverbank, can you make some noise today? For those of you all watching online, we love you. Let's get ready for God's word. I think it's going to be amazing tonight. Man, it's so, I'm so glad to be here. I'm cold. I am cold. <laughs> I'm freezing cold because I'm a Floridian, not born and raised. I was born and raised in West Virginia, so I knew about the cold. But I've been in Florida for 12 years, so I forgot about the cold. But you have reintroduced me to the cold. Thank you so much. But hey, what a great church you have. Do you know how great your church is? Come on, somebody. I've preached in India, in Africa, Nicaragua, around the world. I know a good church. 
it's some great people that's here, and uh, the worship was amazing, uh, especially my dancing worship leader. That just blew my mind. I love her so much. That was so good. But don't you have an amazing pastor, okay? You, now, I, very quickly, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I got to tell you. All right. So I met Pastor Chris last year in Boston, I believe, and I was at a conference and somehow ended up being his Uber driver. And we just fell in love with each other as I drove him around everywhere. And, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's been able to uh, share some things with us about how you guys um, do your generosity here and just what God is building through you here in Vermont. I want you to know it's amazing. Sometimes you can sit in something and it becomes the norm. This ain't the norm. Go ahead, please tell your neighbor beside you. Please look at somebody beside you and say, this ain't the norm. This ain't the norm. And um, I'm just glad to be here and be a part of it. Okay, so y'all pray that I get a little bit warmer as the night goes on and we're going to have a good time. Anybody ready for the word of God tonight? If you're ready, just shout, I'm ready. Oh, I forgot. Hey, I'm married. I've been married 20 years. My wife will be here at the women's conference. Anybody ready for that on tomorrow? She's getting ready right now. Okay. And so, man, it's not too late maybe to call or invite another woman with you. But I got a picture of my family, I believe. This is us. We're the Claters. My oldest is 14. I got a high schooler. Y'all pray for me. And uh, my middle child, she's the only one that looks like my wife a little bit. Her name is Charity. And then my youngest, he's just the jokester right now. But he did get saved. Praise God. His name is Kenny. He's eight years old. Okay. And so that's us. That's the Claters. That's us in Orlando. And so I pastor a live church. Uh, one church in two cities, Orlando and also Gainesville. So if you ever come down and see Mickey, come and check us out. All right. Love you guys. Let's pray and we're going to dive into it. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing in this house tonight. We're not just here to have a church. We want to have an encounter with your way and your will. So Lord, I thank you that you use me and speak through me, through the video, the media to us today, that we will not leave this place the same way that we've came. For those who've been battling depression or sickness, we thank you that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, that there will be refreshing today. There will be healing today. There will be restoration today. There will be direction today. And I thank you that we will not leave this place the same way we've came in Jesus name. If you agree with that, would you just say amen? amen. If you have a Bible, please go with me over to Luke chapter 14. Y'all ready to break it down? Everybody say break it down. I love feedback. You already got that, as you can tell. Tonight's message, or today's message, is entitled The Invitation. Everybody say The Invitation. The invitation. And there's this one uh, key phrase that I want you to grab hold of, that one invite can change a life. Okay? One invite can change a life. We will unpack that in just a moment. But in Luke chapter 14, we kind of have this parable. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Never forget that. I love that Jesus, he didn't just speak in ways that people of his day could not understand. He would use the wheat and the tares of the sowing and reaping in the agricultural community because he wanted people to be able to get it. He didn't explain everything plainly. He did it in a mysterious form so that people could go home and kind of get hold of what he was saying as it unraveled. And so this is a parable about a banquet, a parable about a party. Anybody here like to party? Or, okay, you used to like to party. Now you like a Holy Ghost party. Y'all know it's okay to party, okay? We, this is, a, this is a, a rescue party here anyway. So anyway, um, okay, this is a wedding, you know, a banquet. And so this is an earthly story, but it has a kingdom of God meaning. And so even though he's using something like a banquet or a party or a wedding, there is a very spiritual a message that God wants to get to us out of this parable. And we're going to look at it in Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Are you there? Say, I'm there. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and he invited many guests. Everybody say invited. Okay. And so this was a party here. This was something that he probably put a lot of time and attention to. I don't know if you've ever cooked Thanksgiving dinner and invited people over or a big Christmas dinner, invited people over. And so there was a lot of effort that's going into the banquet. Okay. And so right here in verse 17, it says at the time of the banquet, he sent his servants um, to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. All right. There's a lot of preparation that went into this. Um, someone on my team, they just got married in Puerto Rico. She planned for the whole year for everybody to go to Puerto Rico. So there was a lot of time and attention. So basically what it's saying, everything is now ready, meaning that we've already taken care of the caterers. We already uh, put our down payment on the event venue and we're now ready for you to come to my party. Right. And so verse 18, it says, but they all alike began to make excuses. 
And um, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes when you start inviting people to church, they come up with all kinds of excuses, you know. And um, I remember I had a mentor that used to say, excuses are nothing but a crutch for the uncommitted. They pacify you, but they never satisfy God. And I really believe that as we finish off this year, you want to finish strong. How many of y'all want to finish this year strong, yeah. right? There comes a time in your development in Christ that you got to put aside the excuses. You know, we make up so many excuses of why we can't go through roots or get involved in a church or we can't come to church or we can't tithe or give. You know, we make so many excuses and they pacify us. They make us feel like, oh, you know what? That's a good excuse. But they don't satisfy the command of God. And there comes a place in your walk where you cannot come up with excuses of why I can't give and why I can't serve. I just have to do what God's called me to do. And the church said, amen. They all began to make excuses. The first said, I just bought a field, and I got to go, and I got to see it. Please excuse me. Translation, I'm too busy with work right now. I'm too busy with school right now. I just bought a new home. Somebody say excuses. excuses. The second one, right, he said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Can you please excuse me? Translation. I just got a new truck and I need to drive up into the mountains. I need to go skiing. You know, I need to drive down to, to Boston and maybe watch the Celtics play. I can't make it right now, Pastor. I know you need me to be an usher. Everybody say excuses. But I love the last one here. <laughs> Still another one came and they said, I just got married. I can't come. Everybody say excuses. And this one is the worst to me because, you know, single people, sometimes they always believe in God for somebody. And God finally gives you your bow ass, and then you put them in front of God, and it ain't right. Nobody's saying nothing tonight. What, today. what I'm saying is that sometimes God gives you the blessing, and the blessing becomes a distraction to what he's called you to do. Meaning that we can never let the promotion of God and the prosperity of God begin to be first place in our heart. And I love these things because all three of these excuses was actually the blessing of God. Five yoke of oxen, right? What was the first one? The first one was what y'all just said. And the third one was somebody just got married. These are all the things that probably you want. These are all of the things that are the good things of God, the blessing of God. But now they're using the blessing of God to prohibit them from obeying God. And we've got to make sure that we don't do that. Because sometimes the blessing of God can become an idol. And God always wants to be first. Nobody's saying nothing up in Vermont tonight. Praise <laughs> God. Verse 21, and the servant came back and he reported this to his master. And the owner of the house became angry and he ordered his servants. He said, go out quickly into the streets, into the alleys of the town. And I love this. He says, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Meaning that if we don't want to do what God's called us to do, he will step over us and just look for those who are willing. Think about this for a moment. God is so serious about what he has purposed us to do that he will look for people that are just willing. It doesn't matter their race, their education, their background, don't matter what they smell like, don't matter what they did last night, as long as they are willing. And these people are making up excuses of why they cannot serve God and get people to the party. And he's like, go get the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Go to the next one. Right, watch this. Sir, the servant said, what you've ordered has been done, but there's still room. Now, this is a prophetic word tonight. Are y'all hearing me? Is this thing on? That there's still room. How many of you all know as long as there's lost people in Vermont, there's still room. There's still room in the house. There's still room. See, it's not that we want one service. We need to fill up one service and two services. Then we need three services. Then we need four services. It's not that we just need two campuses. We need three campuses and four campuses and ten campuses. Why? Because there's still room. And while we have time before Jesus comes back, we got to go and make sure that the master's request is important to us. And the master told his servant, he said, go out to the roads and the country lanes and then compel him to come in. I love it because the roads and the country lanes is where people are. You know, sometimes as Christians, we love to tell people to come to church. I think that's the second step. The first step is that we got to be the church. Literally, the church should leave out because you are the church and go to where people are. You say, what is the country lanes? It is the shopping centers, the malls, 
the boardrooms, your neighborhood, the country lanes, the, the, where, where people are, just where everyday broken, hurting people that don't know Jesus yet, wherever they are, there's an expectation that the servants are going to go out. They're not just going to say, come. Basically, we're going to go out, watch this, to the roads and the country lanes, and we're going to compel them to come in. We're not just going to say, hey, come in. We're going to go to where they are. Then we're going to say, hey, we want you to come in. And I love the word compel because that means that with everything that you have, Compa use all of your emotion in this. Use all of your passion in this. It's not saying beat people over the head with the Bible and be that, you know, that Christian. That's not what it's saying. But with as much innovation as you can come up with, as much creativity, with all of your heart, mind, and soul, don't let people go to hell. Compel them to come in. And this is the why. Are y'all ready tonight? Today. So that my house will be full. So this is the why. So all of this comes down to this one thing that God wants us to accomplish. And this is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning so that my house may be full. And I believe what God is asking us to do today is to make filling his house a priority. You know, you know how we have all kinds of different priorities in our life. You know, we got this priority. Got that. I got it. I've got all these priorities. Matter of fact, if you ask the average American, hey, what's your priorities? What do you want to do in life? You hear things like, well, you know what? I want to get married, and uh, we want to be married for about five years, and then we're going to have a couple kids after we've been together for a while. We're going to buy a home, have a white picket fence with a dog and a cat, you know. And I want the dog to be hypoallergenic, too. I mean, this is, this is, this is you know, not, not too big. Don't, don't bark too much, you know. It, that, that's, if, you say, if you ask the average American, what do you want to accomplish, they'll say, well, you know what, I got a bachelor's degree, and I want to go back into the workforce for a couple of years, I want to get some experience, then I want to go get my master's degree so that I can make a little bit more money, you know, and, and, and that's, if you ask the average, hey, what's your priorities, you'll hear things like, well, you know what, I want to... I want to uh, pay off all my debt. I want to be debt free and I want to be able to retire by the time I'm 35, like 35 is old or something, you know. Now I'm in my 40s, I'm like 35 is just getting started, okay? But I know people, they want to retire so early. And what it is is that our priorities might not be what the master's priorities. If you ask the average American to give us our priorities, like what's important in our life, you are probably not gonna get on the list, yes, I want to fill up the house of God. That's my priority. That's what I want to do. I want to fill up the house. You, you probably won't hear that. But I want to suggest to you tonight that that should be on, on our horizon somewhere. I don't know if it's the top 20, the top 10, the, five, the top 5. I don't know where it should be for you. But my hope is that those of us who, are, who have been saved are helping others be saved. Meaning that God didn't save you just for you. He didn't heal you just for you. He healed you so that you could heal somebody else and save you so that you can save somebody else. And this is very important to the master's plan. And it should be important for us to fill up the house of God. Are y'all here today? Yes. Can I break it down real quick? So y'all know hell's a real place, right? Okay. We need to know that. Because we're being told in society that hell is just a state of mind. Or people say that this is hell. And I want you to know that this ain't hell. There's a lot of hellish things that happen here, poverty and, you know, all kinds of things that happen here, but this ain't hell, okay? Do you know what hell is? What hell really is, is the absence of God. That's all that it is. Now, God is light. Everybody say light. God is love. Everybody say love. He's holiness. Say holiness. He's peace. Say peace. He's joy. Say joy. All hell is, is a place where the attributes of God has been taken away. So now what you have is darkness, death sorrow, guilt, condemnation, the weeping and gnashing of teeth. The crazy thing about hell is that God never created hell for mankind. He created hell for the devil and a third of the angels that rebelled against God, okay? Matter of fact, out of all seven billion people all around the earth, everybody who's ever lived before or will come, God has already predestined them to be children of God. Did you know that? Matter of fact, I think it's in Revelations where the Bible says that if you don't confess Jesus, your name will be blotted out of the book of life, meaning that your name was already there, meaning that God has already chosen you and I to be sons and daughters of his. However, because he loves us so much, he's given you this one thing called a free will. Meaning that God did not want robots. He didn't want to make you give and make you come to church. This is what we get to do. This ain't what we have to do. 
He didn't want to make you love him. He says, I love you so much that I put my son on the cross and he died a sinner's death so that you wouldn't have to go there. But I will not make you be saved. I will not make you have eternal life. I will not make you receive my love and forgiveness. That will be your choice. And I love you enough that if you want to go to a devil's hell, I will turn the blind eye like he did with Jesus on the cross. And it broke the father's heart to have to turn away from Jesus as he paid the price for our sin. And that's what happens to the heart of God as the creation that he's created uses their own will to say no to him. And he can't do anything about it because he's given us that as a gift. The good news for us today and those of us who are watching online is that nobody has to go to hell. Nobody has to go to hell. Come on, somebody. That's good news today. That's good news today. <laughs> that nobody has to go to hell. Jesus is the antidote for man's sin and predicament. And so what our job is to do is to make sure that hell is depopulated and heaven is populated with the church say amen. amen. What prevents people from sharing their faith? Fear of rejection. Nobody likes to be rejected, but when, listen, when they reject you, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting God, right? You know I'm, talk, I'm talking about soul winning tonight. I'm talking about you being on a rescue mission. Why don't people share their faith? It's uncomfortable. It's not my personality to do so. You know, I'm an Enneagram one. It's not really what I do. I'm a three or a seven. That's not really what I do. I'm an introvert. And it's amazing how we put on these labels that don't come from God's word. And I'm all about self-awareness. I am a three. I am an achiever. And I have to reach my goals tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> but listen, and, and I am an introvert. Matt, I get refreshing by being by myself. I wish people would li leave me alone. You say, well, pastor, why are you always in front of crowds? Because my personality type is submitted to my call. Yeah. And it's so easy for us to hide out and say, you know what? That's just not me. I don't share my faith. I'm in a grocery store. I hear the Holy Spirit, but not right now, Lord. I got to go get my watermelon and go home. But what would happen if you say, I don't care what Enneagram I am. I don't care what Myers and Briggs say. I, I, I care what Jesus says. And he said, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. And how can they hear unless there be a preacher? And I've been given a ministry of reconciliation. And if I don't say nothing, nobody is. I'm here to say that it's up to us. I got to move on. And so why don't people share their faith? They're not sure how to. Here's some practical ways on sharing your faith. If you're ready, say I'm ready. Come on, I know you're putting this in your phone. I know you're writing this down. I know you're excited to do this. Because this is the part of the message that takes application. This is the part of the message where you got to say, you know what? I'm going to do something about this. Here's some things. Look out for people's needs. Look for opportunities to care for them when they don't expect it. Ask people if you can pray for them. Do you know that atheists and agnostics don't mind if they're going through something for somebody to pray for them? Think about it for a second. If you don't believe in God, but your marriage is being torn up or you got a bad doctor's report and a Christian say, hey, can I pray for you? They're thinking, hey, let's roll the dice. It might work. It might not. Let's see. I ain't got, you know. But what happens when you pray for somebody is that Holy Spirit opens up their heart. And after you pray for them, maybe you can minister the gospel to them. Acts of benevolence, you know, paying for the people's coffee that's in the Starbucks line behind you, paying for people's lunch, bringing some donuts to the office, uh, sim simply texting people. Um, calling them, emailing them, asking people to come, uh, you know, come to church with you. Don't say no for people. Sometimes we say, well, you know, you know, I work with them and I know how they are and they're not going to come. Don't say no for people. You don't know what God is doing in them on their journey. All right. Just talk to people about random things. This is my favorite thing to do. I go into the, into the mall and I go into a foot locker somewhere. Man, I love them shoes. Oh, look at them shoes, man. How, how long? How much of them shoes? Man, I'm over there. Hey, man, are you saved? Are you born again? Do you know? Because first, get people to like you. you. They're already in your world. I got to move on. Here's the easiest one. Invite them to church. Could you do this? Grab that invite card for me real quickly. Grab that invite card. Pull it out. Wave at me real quick. Wave it in the air like you really do care. Say, hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> do you know that we didn't give you this to waste paper? Do you know that this is a lifeline to somebody who's drowning in sin? And do you know that every single week our prayer for you is that the Holy Spirit is going to put somebody in your life 
that you can simply throw this lifeline to. From this day forward, please don't look at this invite card as a piece of paper. It is a lifeline. Amen. And we are on a mission to rescue the lost at any cost. Do I have any help in this place today? <laughs> Keyboardists, please come on back. There's a story told of a young woman. Listen to this story. She was... <laughs> Just making it plain. She was about 22 years old, and um, she was at college. How she got to college was a miracle. She had come from a home of domestic violence, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse. And she had actually been diagnosed depressed for about 10 years of her life at this point. It was a Saturday and she's in her apartment. She has the covers over her head. She's literally thinking about taking her life. It's in the middle of the day. All of the curtains are closed. She's sleeping like she normally does. She had, um, she had failed out of college. She didn't know where to go with her life. She had no direction. She had no purpose. And she heard a knock at the door. And she went to the door, and there was two guys with ties on and Bibles. And they wasn't Jehovah Witnesses. Praise the Lord. They were two gentlemen from a local church from down the street. Long story short, they led that young woman to the Lord that day. After she gave her heart to Jesus, she went back into her apartment. She opened up the blinds. She began to let light in. All of a sudden, she had experienced a love that she had never experienced before, and she had a hope that she had never had before. What those two men did not know is that that young woman was depressed and thinking about taking her life. What those two young men did not know is that that woman would not only be healed of depression, and now be 20 years depression free. They did not know that she would break generational curses of alcoholism. They did not know that she would be the first to be married and, and, and have a successful family, that she would be the first to be in business in her family and be a businesswoman. They did not know that she would go on to pastor and, and, and to write books and to be a YouTuber and an influencer. They did not know that she would marry me. And, and so the woman that I'm talking to you about, this is like a precursor for what you're going to receive on tomorrow, is my wife, Tabitha. And they did not know that when they knocked on her door and they went out into the country roads and the lanes to compel people to come, that they would find this woman. They just wanted to go out and do their father's business. They just wanted to go out and release the invitation they didn't know I'm sure that they had the dog sicked on them and people wasn't home and people persecuted them I'm sure on that Saturday they could have been out playing golf or watching NASCAR or fishing somewhere I'm sure they had all kinds of things to do and people are saying what are you doing on 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 Saturday they did not know that all they were doing was the master's business they did not know that they were stepping out to where people were and they were using everything that Jesus has done in their life to compel people to come in they were simply doing what we read in the parable. And the crazy thing about the invitation is that one invite can change a life. But if you get the right life, that one, one invite can change thousands of lives. And I'm here to declare to you that there are Tabithas all over Vermont, all over New Hampshire, all throughout New England. I'm here to declare to you that there are people that are depressed, wounded, and addicted, and afflicted right now that just needs a word from you, just needs some boldness from you, just needs some love from you, that just needs some grace from you. And Jesus is no longer preaching the gospel because he's commissioned us to do it on his behalf. Amen. 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 Can I pray for you tonight? I want to pray that God will give you a spirit of boldness and he will give you just an evangelistic spirit. What I mean by that is just some, just a desire to share your faith with people. Listen very carefully. 
I believe that there's power in prayer. That we can ask God for something simple. And if we believe we receive it by faith, he'll give it to us immediately. Could you do this? Under your breath, could you just say, God, give me a, give me a passion for the lost. Give me your heart for the wounded. And just ask him, say, God, give me, just give me a boldness and wisdom to be able to share with, with those who are around me that are far away from you, God. Give me this desire to step out of my comfort zone because I believe he's given it to you. As you ask him right now, wherever you are, online, in the sanctuary, wherever you are, as you ask this, this, this simple request, I believe God's given you everything that you ask him for. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that this church is just beginning for what you have for them to do next. That the harvest is truly plenteous. Yes. It's just the laborers that have been few. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, lift up your eyes, for the harvest field is white. The people that you live beside, the people that you work with, the people that you seem just to be nice people, nice people do go to hell without a Savior. God has given you a boldness. He's given you a message. He's given you a mantle to let your light shine and let the darkness flee. So, God, we just pray for every person that's here that you're giving us wisdom. You're giving us the ability. You're giving us the desire to be radical soul winners from this day forward. We thank you that the harvest is coming in from the north, south, east, and west. Those who have rejected the gospel before will be the most radical servants on tomorrow. We thank you for our mothers and our fathers and our sons and our daughters and our cousins and our co-workers. We thank you, Lord, that we're anointed for this time right here, right now. I thank you, Lord, that things will never be the same again. Send us the harvest, God. We thank you that this area shall be saved. In Jesus' wonderful name, if you agree with that, just say amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Pastor Chris, I love you, man. I love you, too. Thank you, Pastor Ken. It's good, right, church? Mm. So good. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, Pastor Ken was just talking about this, this whole, the real hell thing. And um, I think there are people right here, right now, in this room, in Claremont, online, and, and you heard this message maybe for the very first time that Jesus came and did for you what you could never do for yourself. It, but it really comes back to you being honest about yourself. It's about recognizing the the mess that we all have been born into. The scripture says, for all have sinned and fallen short of God and his glory. God is holy, God is perfect, and you and I are not. And maybe you feel the weight of that here today. Maybe you're sitting in your living room and you feel the weight of that. Maybe you're in Claremont, you're sitting there, and you're like, man, that is so me. I'm so, I feel so far from God. Pastor Ken just spoke that. I heard that, and I feel the weight of that. But can I just say this? As much as you feel the weight, that chasm between you and God, the scripture says that there's a consequence of that that we spoke of. It says in, in Romans, it says, for the wages of sin is death. It, the, the consequence of our sin is literally 10 out of 10 people will die. You will die one day. And I'm so thankful that Pastor Ken had the boldness to lay that out, that there's more to us than just this. There's something beyond this life. And without our sins removed, without our sins forgiven, we face eternity separated from God in that place known as hell. And I know that makes me uncomfortable, and I know it does many as well. That's a problem. But can I tell you today that there's a solution to that problem? And the solution to that problem is the one that we've been speaking of. His name is Jesus. You see, the scripture says, for God so loved the world, as jacked up and sinful as we are, we all you know, know the weight of our sin, our wrongdoing. But Jesus was sent by God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, he died on that Roman cross, paid the price for your sin and my sin, 
Three days later, he conquered death. He conquered hell so that you and I don't have to face the consequence of our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not face that separation but will have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is the solution to our sin problem. Let me ask you this. Do you know him? We could talk all day about, we've talked a lot about Jesus. We've talked a lot about, you know, sharing faith. But let me ask you, do you know the Jesus that we've been talking about? You're here today, you're watching online, wherever you are, and you're like, Chris, I, I, I want to know this Jesus you speak of. I, I want to I I I know this Jesus. I want my sins forgiven. Jesus, I want him to come into my life. I want, I want to know that I have everlasting life, forgiveness and everlasting life in heaven. I want to know Jesus today. Well, I want to give you the opportunity right here, right now, to meet Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today, you're watching online, you're in Claremont, wherever you are, and you want to say yes to forgiveness, you want to say yes to hope, you want to say yes to everlasting life, I want to give you that opportunity right here, right now. Nobody's looking around. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want to invite you to just quietly raise your hand right where you are. If you're in Claremont, White River, online, wherever you are, I'm going to count to three. One, believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe, and you will be rescued from the consequence of sin. Two, today is the day that you can be rescued. Right here, right now, you can be rescued from the consequence of sin. And if that's you, three, I want you to just quietly raise your hand right where you are. Claremont, White River, just keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. So here's the thing. As you have your hand up, I just want you, I'm going to invite a friend of mine just to come and stand right by your row, wherever you are. And I just, want you to, I just want you to look up at my friend right where you are. Just look at him. If something they want to get in your hand and help you better understand what it is to follow Jesus. You're in Claremont. You're in White River. You're online. And you're like, I want to say yes to Jesus. You have a host right there that wants to talk to you. Just let him know you want to say yes to Jesus. And our friend wants to help you take a next step in your faith. I'm going to invite you just to kind of bring your friend down to the front, wherever you are. If it's in Claremont, just take your friend right to the back, and we want to help you take a next step in your faith. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have to come here and, and celebrate you, even talk candidly about sharing our faith. Thank you for Pastor Ken and, and his heart to just share this with us today. I pray, Jesus, that from this day, our lives will never be the same. And that you will use this as a catalyst of harvest and rescue unlike we ever could ever have imagined. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, will you do me a favor? I want to invite you just to quiet. I just want you to stand where you are. And we're going to sing a song together. We want to uh, collectively sing the name of Jesus together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, he is there, and it's obvious that he is here with us. Now let's sing to him collectively. Will you, will you sing this with us, church? As I walk now 
See you. 
accepts us as we are, we can come just as we are. Let's celebrate this. Take your fears, throw them away. Take your stress, throw them away. We're just here to celebrate our God. Come on. Hey, thanks again for joining us here at Riverbank Church. It's always our heart to help you take some next steps in your faith. And for ways to do that, check out riverbankchurch.com next. There you'll find groups, events, and resources to get you better plugged in to what God has for you. We hope you enjoyed your time with us today, and we hope you join us again next week.